Hello and welcome to another episode of My Backstage Pass. This is your host, Lee Zimmerman, and I'm here with my producer, co-host, and good buddy, Billy Hubbard. And today we're very excited to have Cody Braun of the wonderful band Reckless Kelly here as our guest. Hey, Cody, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Enjoying the sunshine down here in Austin. So you're in Austin. Uh, your brother is currently in Austin, but he's going back to your uh, your hometown or your home state of uh, Idaho soon. How do you divide your ta- your time? Are you in Austin primarily, or you get back to Idaho as well? Or I'm in Austin pretty much full time. My wife and I um, have a house here, and mm-hmm. okay. I- pretty much spend all of my time here. I, I do get up to Idaho for visits, you know, just was yep. just up there and visited my folks, but um, I don't have a house up there or anything, just mainly mainly here in Texas. All right. You guys, so uh, you you uh, originated in Idaho. You're a multi-generational family of musicians and uh you know, the 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 music bug, the music talent, we should say. I guess runs in your in your genes, your blue genes, but also in your you know internal genes as well. Because <laughs> yeah. you you your your grandfather was a musician, and I guess you were you were in your father's band early on, and then you guys went off and did your own thing and have done it very well. So I guess it was predetermined, predetermined in a way that this is what you would do: make music, right? Yeah, I think we all knew pretty early on that this is what we wanted to do and we're happy doing. So, yeah, I think, we, you know, we all started playing when we were just kids and uh, it's just kind of stuck with us and we've always enjoyed it. Must have made the parents very proud. To, I, I mean, uh, your brother told us that you were like, I guess, like six or seven or five or very, very young when you actually uh, began, you know, putting your talents to good effort here. Um, child yeah, prodigies, I, child prodigies. <laughs> I don't know about that. We've practiced a lot, but we had, uh, yeah, we got in musical instruments for Christmas and just kind of always wanted to be on stage because that's what our dad did and our uncles and everybody we were surrounded with was into music. So that's, we wanted to, kind of get, wanted to get up there as quick as we could. <laughs> yeah, and, and obviously you've uh, put that talent to good use. I mean, it's been what, like almost thirty years here that you're at this, right? Yeah, thirty years for Reckless Kelly next year, and then uh, we did play with our dad for nine years before that. So literally our whole life. <laughs> wow. wow, that's pretty impressive. I'm I'm doing the math here, so I'm thinking that you actually started when you were prenatal. I mean, because we don't want to <laughs> age you at all here, but uh, that's that's really fantastic. And and you've done like what fifteen or seventeen albums at this point as well. Yeah, I've kind of lost count, but um, yeah, we did. <laughs> all right, about that with Reckless Kelly, and then um, we recorded, I think, four records, four or five records with the family band when we were kids. They're all on cassette tape. <laughs> on cassette, are, are they available? Yeah. Um, would one be able to find these albums? I mean, I'm a completist, but I, I would actually go back and I'd want to uh, acquire the albums with the family band. Are they available if one were to? They're really, you kind of got to find them. They're, they're, they pop up on eBay once in a while. But right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're out of print and I don't know if we'll, we'll print them again. You can find some of the stuff on uh, YouTube. Okay. Uh, some folks have put some of the stuff up there, but. Yeah, they're just kind of, you know, maybe at the uh, the local secondhand store in Chalice, Idaho, you can probably find a couple. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> the, bar- I think, the bargain bin. <laughs> well, I think maybe it's time for a Reckless Kelly uh, Braun Brothers anthology or something like that. A multi-disc, you know, 18 CD set or something that compiles it all. I mean. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I Something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about the new album, The Last Frontier, um, which is just, uh, it's a wonderful new record. Um, it's your first album in four years, I guess. So 
I guess the fans were waiting a little bit for its arrival, but uh, I think their patience has certainly paid off with it. Um, and, Thank you. Uh, and, and, you know, when, you, when you've done this for almost 30 years, you've put out the 15 or 17 albums. Um, it, it seems like when you would go into the studio on a new project, it's kind of auspicious because you've you've achieved a high bar now you go in do you think to yourself well you know we're at that very very high bar we have to at least equal live up to our reputation and all the accolades that we've gotten does that enter your mind at all um i think subconsciously a bit you know i mean you always want to make a better record than you made last time and um, we've enjoyed, you know, trying to change things up and trying different approaches and doing things that we haven't done before. So we always kind of try to do that. But um, I, I don't know. I, I think we've always just kind of really focused on the songs and, you know, waiting until we have the right amount of songs and the right songs that fit together. You know, it's kind of we've we've been uh, I don't know, we put out less records than some of our peers. Um for that reason, you know, we've had, you know, three, four years in between records is pretty normal for us because uh-huh. we like to kind of really wait until we have the right material and and then spend enough time with it to really go in and, and make make a good record. And we've we've always enjoyed the process and, you know, making records, you know, start to finish is something that I think we're seeing less of these days. With a lot of people kind of focused on singles and EPs yeah. and yeah whatnot but uh, we've always really enjoyed the whole process and the art of you know making a record and the artwork and and the whole, all of all of it so we and, try and take our time and, and enjoy it well and and the uh, title song and the title of the album itself ties into the fact that you're uh like on your last formal tour i guess here this is going to be uh sort of the end of uh the large-scale touring that you've done in the past um sort of the yeah yeah we're kind of just taking a different approach and um we've been on the road for so long we just kind of are ready to to do it a little bit differently and um just i don't know we've we've just kind of reached a point where kind of it's plateaued a bit out on the road and you know, we've we've uh, kind of put off being at home with our families and and just having some time for ourselves for so long that you know we've kind of reached a point where it's like, yeah, let's slow down. Instead of just continuing down the same path, we decided to cut back on shows, and then we can, you know, we're still going to keep the band together and play here and there and put records out when we want to. But yeah, we're just kind of going to take a different approach for a bit and see how that goes. We don't really have much of a plan other than that. <laughs> well, it's, it seems like a kind of a different mindset here. Um, and, and I mean, will you miss the road? I mean, it sounds like you're ready to kind of uh, ease, ease back on it. But having done it for so many years, it's going to be a whole change in lifestyle sort of right or, or yeah for sure yeah 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 i think i'll miss a lot of it you know i'm definitely gonna miss seeing all our friends and family and people we've met over the years that you get to run to once a year out on the road and I, i've always enjoyed the traveling and getting to see new places and you know but again like we've we've played in every state you know and we've we've played in most of them 30 or 40 times Wow. I've kind of been all the way across the country dozens and dozens of times and um, have got to travel around the world a bit. And so kind of trying to find things that we haven't done, you know, is going to be be fun and something to kind of look forward to as well. I mean, in yeah, I definitely I'll miss it. Well, inevitably, the, the question uh, that that's asked of bands that have a great deal of touring experience, I mean, do you like the touring? And the inevitable answer is, well, when we're on stage, we're playing for free. You're actually paying us to do the traveling, you know, putting up with the hassles and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, it, it sounds like you kind of 
feel the same way, you know, loving to play, but enough already with the traveling and the hassles that, that come with it, you know? I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, we've gotten so good at it over the years, um, not tooting my own horn, but like no, all just right. all of the things that kind of come with travel, we've definitely got it down, you know? We, we can get through airport security pretty quick, and we can... <laughs> <laughs> Do you find, have a, the, uh, find a rental van and a U-Haul when we need to, and the bus breaks down pretty quick. And, all right, you know it's it's all kind of a challenge, you know, and it's I don't know parts of it are really fun. I think the just the time I think is the biggest thing at this point. You know, it's just like you realize how quickly it goes by and yeah, how much you've got left, and do you want to spend you know another year mainly waiting, sitting in a parking lot for nine hours a day waiting for showtime you know <laughs> is that uh, what happens you're kind of uh <laughs> destroying the mystique here i i uh, <laughs> i think oh they're backstage they're having a great time they're partying they're you know enjoying the backstage beverages but you're sitting in a parking lot for nine hours <laughs> it really destroys the whole image cody <laughs> uh, I hate to say I'm that. I'm sorry. It's really, you, know, <laughs> you know. Well, we've definitely had our our fair share of parking lot parties, you know, and we and we do have a lot of fun. And we get out and you know try and explore the towns we're in, and right. Um, you know, we've got our favorite spots to eat and different little things we like to do. But um, yeah, I mean, you just you spend an incredible amount of time waiting, you know, waiting on sound check, and then you've got a radio interview and then you've got to, you know, try and grab a bite to eat before you head to the show. And yeah. I don't know. There's just kind of, it, it's, it's hectic, but at the same time, you just, there's a lot of downtime. We're just kind of waiting or hanging out. Like Tom Petty says, the waiting is the hardest part. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, you've also been very prolific when you're not on the road and you're in the studio because you're also a, uh, a producer and 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 that keeps you busy as well right i mean so yeah yeah i've been producing stuff for the last probably 10 or 15 years and um i really enjoy it i, I love being able to help a young band and you know or just bring something new to the table for for a band you know regardless of their age but um i really enjoy the process again of you know making records and you know, picking songs and coming up with arrangements and, you know, that, that process for me is really a lot of fun and it's a way to express myself and then also help other bands express themselves. And so I do really enjoy that. I, I love, I do a lot of studio work, you know, session work as well. And then working with a friend of mine here in town that has a TV show called the Texas music scene. Oh, wow. And, uh, been working with him a bit, learning how to produce TV shows. Um, and I've got to be assistant director on a couple projects. And he and I co-directed our latest video, um, music video. So I've been trying to get into that a bit and really enjoying that. Um, I did a film when I was a kid with Sam Elliott and Catherine Ross. It was a Western cowboy movie and just kind of fell in love with film at that point. And so I was just, I, I, I'm looking forward to having some time to be able to kind of focus on, on a bit more of that and see kind of where that goes. I mean, where it it takes seems, me. Yeah, it seems like you won't be idle, that you've got uh, all these other things in the works and you'll continue, you know, to follow that creative uh, uh, process there as well. Uh, that, that's, that's great to have ambitions beyond, you know, to, to have other talents that you can draw upon. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, I'm always going to be doing art, you know, when I'm home, I've got a room that's dedicated to music and a room that I can paint in and, and just kind of, I don't know, I live in Austin, Texas, and I have, you know, a lot of friends here that allow me to come and sit in with them. And so I'm always jumping at any chance I can to go play with other people. And um, I, yeah, I'm definitely not slowing down, just kind of moving in a different direction. So, so how does your work as a producer and uh, a contributing musician to other entities, how does that impact your work with Reckless Kelly? I would think that it brings you a certain amount of, uh, I don't know what the word is, cachet, knowledge that you can bring to the band and 
benefit the band because of this other th- the other things that you do, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, anytime you're out, you know, working with other people, you learn a lot and are getting inspired by different people and different artists. And so, yeah, then you can kind of take that to the table when you get uh, back in the studio with our band and, um, you know, it all helps. I mean, whether you're a writer or a director or producer, you know, you're always being influenced and always kind of trying to find new ways to do what you do and get better at what you do. Well, you guys have uh, certainly been better. You've got four Grammy nominations and uh, you've, you've won a Grammy. I mean, that's 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 pretty impressive, buddy. That's 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 really impressive. Did you did you go out to the Grammys uh, uh, awards show and you know be part of that whole showbiz vibe when 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 that occurred? Were you we there? did, yeah, yeah. We flew from the first time we went out. We flew from Little Rock, Arkansas in our suits and like got (laughs) got there just as the doors were opening like we flew overnight and yeah um you know just didn't have time to even take a shower before we went so that was kind of kind of wild and fun and Uh um then we we went back the second time the third time we didn't go the year we won we didn't go oh (laughs) uh, bad 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 timing Yeah, and then uh, yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> what, what you 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 thought that after being nominated and not getting the big prize, what the heck? It, it's not going to happen. I mean, why didn't you go? No, we had something else that like we just couldn't get there from where we were at. Okay, and we had done it twice before, and it's pretty it's expensive to you know book the flights and the tickets and because you got to buy tickets, believe it or not. Even if you're nominated, you still got to buy. You have to Tickets buy a ticket and- when you're nominated. Uh, oh yeah. Well, that you've given us uh, some inside information. <laughs> we were not available. Uh, Billy here, my my <laughs> partner Billy, has recorded an album, a wonderful album. We're hoping he's going to get a Grammy <laughs> nod. But Billy, yeah. does that lessen your expectation now that you have to buy your own? That's well, just hey. not right. I'm outraged. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I'm friend, outraged, Cody a, Brown. A friend of mine, uh, Billy Droz, he's an artist, bluegrass artist, and he hosted the awards with uh, Rhonda Vincent. He was here at my house recently, and he said, yeah, man, I just to host him, he said, I went out and paid 800 bucks for a tux and got a spray tan and got his teeth whitened. <laughs> and I said, did you got give me? his you? teeth whitened with yeah. a spray tan? No, he did spray tan to get dark i guess <laughs> and then he said i said well do they give you an expense account for that he said no they didn't give you i that's said man that's, i don't think that would, that's a lot of money i i hope they don't make you pay to go to the uh after party i mean to oh, me yeah, that that's would twice be as much as the uh it's twice as expensive as the grammy ticket <laughs> oh boy well, wait a minute wait a minute you went to the after parties and again that costs money oh man yeah, yeah if you, man. even if you win do you Good old like United States of America, baby. Oh, <laughs> man. Charge you coming and going. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we can I, afford to win, Lee. No, I don't, th- I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, you're really uh, demystifying the whole process there. I had no idea. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, hey, I was curious about something. I, I, always, I read about your the hits, Cation, you guys. So now if you slow down your touring, are you guys still going to do the get away for your cabin or I think there's a story. He doesn't have a cabin up there. He spent all his oh, money yeah. on Grammy tickets. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Can't do another mortgage. Oh. Well, I got plenty of them that I can go to for free up there. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. Idaho, Idaho doesn't cost me nothing. Oh, good. <laughs> well, that's and good. yeah, we'll still be, we'll still be doing those trips. That's absolutely. Yeah. That sounds fun. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I I think we should hear a song off the new album. This one is called Left of My Heart. Yeah, yeah, off the last frontier. Off the last frontier. So why don't we hear uh, some of that uh, song, and then we'll come back and chat afterwards. Yeah. I've got to wipe away my tears. I've got to compose myself. I'm (laughs) I'm distraught. So (laughs) it'll give me some time. Here we go. Oh, 
She left me bleeding. She left me stranded. She left me ragged and she left me cold. I gave her my heart and I gave her my soul. She don't want them anymore. So you can have a step to my heart. It's been broken, but there's still a few working parts. A little tough love, a little jump start. If you think you can keep it from falling apart, honey, you can have a slip to my heart. My hands are steady. That's guitar work. Yeah. I mean, you guys just nail it. There's such a Thank you. reverberation and resi- I mean, these songs just jump out at you. And, uh, you know, it's true to the Reckless Kelly uh, uh, signature sound, the way you guys, sh- you make anthemic songs. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, these songs just really seem like they're tailor-made for live performance but when you listen to them on record they just grab you it, it's so infectious and uh you know and, and, and so much well it's true and, and on the new album these are really tight songs you know i guess they're mostly under three minutes and just you know just it's like old school in a way you know to have songs that just grab you from the get-go and yeah. uh, almost like you've been playing a long time together well, yeah, yeah Billy, <laughs> they, billy's still upset about having to pay for the grammys uh. he's not <laughs> he's drifted off uh but but yeah 30 years mm-hmm. and uh all these all these albums it, it must almost seem like second nature to you when you go in that familiarity factor i mean it, is that the case when you go in i mean you got it. It down. really is. I mean, we we like to record here in Austin at Arlen Studios, and we made our our first record there in 1997. And um, wow! So we've been we've recorded in other places over the years, but we kind of always drift back to Arlen. So it it feels like home, and we know the folks over there really well, and it, it's really uh, a great vibe. And we know all the gear, and so I mean, it's very comfortable and we kind of know our process over there. So yeah, when we go in, we kind of set everything up and the band plays live and, um, you know, we go and overdub harmony vocals and, you know, solos here and there, but it's pretty much the band playing live. Wow. It's really in sync. That, that's the beauty of a, a brotherly band. And I know your brothers, uh, Gary and Mickey from uh, Mickey and the motor cars. They're also yeah. contributing to this album as well. And, uh, you know, it's uh, you got it, all the elements there that that you know put it all together for you. It's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. Yeah, we're really lucky to get to 
get to do it with our friends and family and, you know, to have been able to do it for so long and um, still enjoy doing it, you know, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I think, you know, you see a lot of people that kind of lose faith in the whole process and, you know, just, I don't know, they, it's, it's tough, you know, you kind of get beat up out there and um, some days are harder than others and some days are better than others. But, you know, the fact that we're all still friends and enjoy making music together and um, enjoy playing together is just uh pretty cool thing it is a cool thing because i'm sorry billy Billy was going to ask a question but oh. i do you mind if i oh you, you go ahead. We're, we're both a little <laughs> we're still askew from the grammy thing but uh you know a, a lot of sibling bands um don't have what you just described and i mean you could talk about the everly brothers you could talk about ray and day davis from the kinks you could talk about oasis where the brothers were at the forefront but just got ticked off at each other literally at times having fisticuffs on stage but you've managed to avoid that to your credit uh you know it doesn't seem to have ever gotten in the way no no fisticuffs on stage i guess which is a wonderful yeah thing. we I always say we, we never had any money to fight over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, 30 years, I hope you have some there. I, you have enough to afford the Grammy parties, for God's sakes. Uh, yeah, we, we blew it all on our, our fancy suits for the Grammys. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah I, w- I was just going to say, the, the, uh, I watched that music, the music, music video for What's Left of My Heart, and that, that was really cool. And, and I, I realized what, my songs, when I write, are all like, four minutes long and a half. And I thought, man, I would save a lot of money on a video. <laughs> if, if yeah. you t- <laughs> minute two, minute. two minute and 50 seconds. Yeah. So that's another good reason to shorten them. <laughs> Do they charge yeah. by the minute there? Is that how it works, Billy? Well, I think the, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the camera guys do. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. We but, shot that whole video in like five hours. Uh, really? Wow. It was a, yeah, pretty amazing. That's the one I got to co-direct and, I came up with the concept for the video and kind of helped produce everything and set it up. And so we were doing it on a shoestring budget and, wow. and I, it was amazing. Like got to work with some really great folks and, and then we had a bunch of friends just come in and basically had an open bar and well, that'll do shot it. it. The open Shot bar. It as, it flew, as it fell, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is that part of the incentive for the friends to join you? Open bar, oh. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That Maybe. was mainly the, the incentive. <laughs> so that would work, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking notes here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You, you ought to. You ought to. Well, you, you again, um, Reckless Kelly is one of those bands that have such a wonderful legacy, such a wonderful body of music. Every album since day one uh, has never failed to disappoint. And and when, you know, word gets out, there's a new Reckless Kelly album coming out. It, it just, you know, it's anticipation that it's going to be something wonderful. It's It's a wonderful not to dehumanize it, but it's a wonderful brand that I think uh, your fans and followers can can rely on. And so it's uh, it's been wonderful to have you guys doing what you've done and uh, giving us this wonderful music. And I, I hope that even though, you know, the days on the road may be coming to at least a bit of a close in that regard, I hope that you guys continue to make the music that you that you uh, make and uh, you know give us that 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 wonderful gift for uh, quite some time to come. I really hope that's the uh, that's the case. You know, me too. I I really appreciate the kind words and yeah, that's that's the plan to keep keep doing it until we can't. But um, yeah, we we're, we're gonna keep at it as long as we can. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I don't want to just, <laughs> I'm already dwelling on the Grammy thing, but I, I do hope there's another Grammy in the future. And I think that at this point, at least you deserve a discount on the ticket. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Man. Give them a discount. <laughs> Let them into the party for half half yeah. price. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so we'll disappointed. We'll see. It's all good. 
they do a lot of great stuff for kids and uh, people in the industry. It's a, it's a great organization, so we don't mind supporting that. Good, good. Yeah. Professional uh, you know, showbiz. It's all part of the deal. It's yeah. professional, very yeah. professional, very showbiz. I love it. Thank you. I'm, you know, yeah. affirmation. <laughs> yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah. I, like I say, to me, it's one of the albums that uh, you don't hit skip. You know, some a lot of albums I have, I'll. I'll skip that song, maybe this one, but yeah, that says not a lot. Your album, though, Billy, that didn't happen. Uh, uh, no, I'm sure that's never happened to mine. But I'm just saying, <laughs> this one is a great album. It is a great album. Oh, thanks, guys. It was a fun one to make. It. The the good ones are always easy, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. yeah. There you go. Well, we're gonna sign off here. Big thanks to Cody Braun of Reckless Kelly. Be sure and check out the new album, The Last Frontier. It's Reckless kelly.com also thanks to our host lee zimmerman check out his latest book uh, 30 years behind the glass uh, by jim Gaines, now available on amazon and please like share and subscribe to my backstage pass on your favorite platform and we'll see y'all next time thanks guys happy trails happy trails adios <laughs> <laughs>